everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris Ormy, and welcome, a very warm welcome to you all. We play more of our Swansea Way save here on FM21. The Champions League final against Man United is just around the corner. It's been an unbelievable journey to get to this point. A little earlier than I thought we would. I kind of figured this would be a 10 season series and we get round to maybe you know, 2030 before we, uh, we ended things. Um, but we are ending things at the tail end or midpoint really of 2026. Um, it's been a weird journey. It's been a fun journey. We've seen a lot of players go, a lot of players come in. I think we're not quite on that world class players everywhere level yet um still some holes definitely a fullback where we can afford to be a bit worse off there is some rebuilding of that midfield to do for certain and i know the popular decision was to keep rebuilding through youth and i went a very unpopular way if the feedback i've got to date and please do leave different feedback leave a comment in the section below if you believe otherwise but the vast majority seemingly say that we shouldn't have picked up the licked Kamavinga, Reina, and Mbappe. And I will die on a hill for Giovanni Reina because he does fit the Swansea way. The money's up there, but so was the money for Declan Rice, Lewis Cook, um, Chris Mepham, you know, Davy as well. The money was up there, boys. The money was up. So, yeah, even Beachy, uh, especially James Matthews, I think it was 23 million for James Matthews out of Leeds. So, yeah. You can't really complain about Reyna, I don't think. He's born in England. He does count. Um, yeah. So I think he fits. Kamavinga came from England. He was playing in Tottenham. Mbappe and Delicta, just the fact that we we lost two players that we really liked and went took the star players from their respective clubs in return and made a slight profit doing it. So um I kind of stand by that. And if you're gonna break your rules in some way, break them for the best in the world. Best striker Mbappe, best defender Delict, best midfielder Camavinga, best attacking mid Giorena. I'll stand by all those statements as well. So yeah, whether you believe that or not, leave a comment you know, down in the section below. Let me know what you think of those four signings. I don't think they changed the outcome too much. I think we get a little bit better with them. Uh, but that's not to say that some of the other players we could have played wouldn't have been phenomenal as well. The Camavinga for Moon knows that's an easy one to see. I think that's fine. Um... Sant, even instead of Reina, I think would have been okay. Matthews instead of Mbappe would have been okay. Mepham instead of Delict, maybe, maybe not. Richmond's there. We got other options in that lineup. So let me know what you think about that as we head into our our final game of the season. Technically, as things stand, we still will have the Club World Cup, and we do want to keep an eye on the World Cup too while we're at it. But right now. Everything looks good. Mepham and Cook with Brian Fiercy. They are the team leaders. Then comes the four. Reina Mbappe, De Ligt and Camavinga. Beachy uh, joins Cosme and Declan Rice. Matthews and Munoz are influential. And then we've got the others down the bottom. But support from top to bottom is important. Two groups. Fiercy with his group of players. Him and Munoz, the big guys in that locker room. Um, with... Matthews sort of being a little isolated in terms of some of his friends, but he has finally, he's been flicked in between, but he's finally back in with the core group. Um, and I think Ferry as well was quite new. He was one of the ones that was struggling at times. So really like the social groups, really like the happiness. A couple of players want better contracts here. So Michael Sant wants his new deal. And Mitch joins once his new deal. 
and we can do it. I don't really want to spend huge money. I don't want to promise and then not do it. I mean, don't want to talk in an important player. Kind of where I stand. I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant with those deals because, uh, let's see. Yeah, I got a squad player. Regular starter wouldn't be bad, but go on the same important player when, again, we're not sure of the long term future of the position type of thing. Even if we're not going to be there, it's good practice to get those kind of things sort of set in motion. So you know exactly who's worthwhile re signing, who isn't. Who's asking for too much and so on. Um, Bappe, 55 goals, 17 assists, 30 man the match awards. Phenomenal. Ben Beachy, 40 goals, 12 assists, 10 man the match awards. Fiorina, 15, 19, and 12. Uh, Michael Sand, 14 and 17. Great production from him. Uh, James Matthews, limited appearances, 13 and 5. Munoz, 9 and 10. A Camavinga close double double there with a seven and nine, so pretty good return from the boys. Um, most of the defenders and goalies there, not of course having any uh, any goals for the club. No assists from the two goalies. Everyone else got involved, and Ramsden, Levi Towers, Chris Mepham, and Tom Ferry, a man of the match award. Not surprised by those. Cosme, I am. I am surprised that Cosme has never won a Man of the Match award. Um, yeah. That's interesting. That is interesting. Uh, De Ligt and Cosme, Cook, Basie, decent amount of yellow cards, Munoz as well. No reds for the boys. Average rating this season has been fantastic so far. So I don't really need to worry about that. But yeah, this is my lineup. I put my second team out there. I switched Brian Facey to the 12th position because he is still carrying that injury and shouldn't be back for another week. So I don't know if I want to use him. Um, so yeah, we've gone with Ryan Mitchell. We called up another left back. So he is sitting in there right now. Really hope that we don't need to use him. So we're probably going to go with Facey if we need to. But he just gets called up. First team, second team, and the injured man to carry. It's really Ryan Mitchell who's the new guy in there. But I like the backups. I like the teams that we've got out. We've gone with our our best lineups we can, apart from Starkey and Facey, of course. Facey should be the star man. Starkey should be sub number five. Mitchell should slide out of the team. In fact, there are better players for sub number 12 that I would prefer to give the opportunity to. The run so far in the Champions League. We look at Group F. 2-0 at Camp Nou, beating Barcelona as Napoli got off to a great start. Then a draw away from home. Barcelona stumbling as well. But Napoli then came undone at our fingertips. Barcelona, nice away win there in Italy. We travelled to Austria and put our stamp on the game. Good game for us. And then Barcelona undid Napoli, which saw them tumble down towards the bottom of the table. We solidified our place at the top, continuing a big win, 4-0 over Salzburg. Um, then Barcelona came to visit, and we shut them out until very late on. Salzburg claimed third place. Goal just after halftime with an on-loan Swansea boy, Josh Kingdom, um, getting them into that third place realistically as long as we didn't mess up against them and then Barcelona demolished Salzburg but it didn't matter because we took a narrow win in Italy so Salzburg went into the Europa League we carried on as group champions Barcelona comfortable enough in second place gotta give them uh, a little bit of respect for that Juventus put up a Man United, PSG overcame Chelsea, Barcelona overcame Lyon, Benfica out to Real Madrid, Man City away goals, takes them through against Inter Milan, Leipzig's away goals overcome Porto, 
Uh, Ajax defeat Bayern Munich and we took out Royal Sociedad 4 nothing and 3 2. So pretty good in total. The quarterfinals, solid wins for us over Man City 1 0 and 3 0. Man United did put out Ajax and then PSG big win, overturning a 2 0 deficit from Leipzig and Barcelona win the Spanish battle there beating arch rivals real madrid the semis it was a decent game away to barcelona 3-2 we beat them 3-0 in the return fixture and swept up there where we continued uh, from the group stages hype between psg and man united but united shared it and that means final at old trafford the home team is Man United. Very interesting for the Champions League final. They actually get to play in their stadium. But the holders are Swansea. We've only won one. We're here to reclaim and reassert ourselves. To get our title to stand on top of the pile as the best team in Europe. going to be interesting it's going to be interesting i hope we get the job done hope we get the job done over the season against man united we beat them 2-1 in the community shield really early on in the season then coming to the midpoint mbappe rescues us from a bad performance but we get the 2-1 win away and then it's right at the end of the season where again Mbappe late on gets all three points, shuts down United. We're three from three. We need to make it four from four. If it goes to extra time, we can do a fourth sub, which could be useful. Reina is unfit. The rest of the team are raring to go. We've got a good bench as we discussed. See what happens here, but David De Gea, Aaron Van Bissaka, Nikola Milankovic, Harry Maguire, Brandon Williams, Martin Odegaard, Paul Pogba, Mason Greenwood, Bruno Fernandes, Marcus Rashford, and the man Erling Braut Haaland. Yeah, yeah. Both teams really good and deep going forward. A little bit of cracks at the back in both lineups, I would say. Not the best defenses and not the best cover um great goalkeepers but again with dodgy backups but yeah midfield and up front we're, we're built very similar in terms of quality and depth turn so i actually want to what i actually want to say to them play a natural game pressure on the boys up front but the brush pressure on the boys up front to take control of this oh they've got a good lineup they've got a really good lineup we've got a really good lineup too best the british england v wales the defending champions against the hosts there is the boys early on Ilan Starkey with a decent start, it seems. I like that. I like that. Vito de Cosme. Delict. It's joints. Here we go. Here we go. Able to drive from deep a little bit. Finds Kylian Mbappe. Twists and turns past his man. And Declan Rice with a thunderous shot. Cannot get it on target. A good start from us, though, as we seem to be controlling the game. Ben Beachy not really doing too much right now. Corner from Gio Reyna back in the lineup. It's not a bad ball. Cos made a Camavinga back to him and back out to Gio Reyna. Finds Lewis Cook and it 
So off the post, it actually beat the goalie. Oh, De Gea couldn't quite get to it, but we rattled the woodwork early. We're in control. Seven shots, one on target. We need to be doing better here. Starkey with a throw in. It goes to Ben Beachy. A little bit underwhelming first half from him. Lovely ball out to Mitch Joins. Declan Rice. Gio Reyna. Oh, De Gea just scoops up. He didn't look certain there when he was trying to grab that ball, but just about got his hands on it. He goes long. Cosme down to Declan Rice. We start again. Out wide. Killing Mbappe. What a goal! Oh my god, if you're going to pay 170 million, you expect some magic from time to time. Cosme's headed down. Rice. Mbappe backpedaling already. Gets the ball. Takes it past the man in stride. Outside of the right foot. Into the top corner. Let's go. Nice to meet you, boys. Nice to meet you, Killian. Dagon Rice does get booked, though. And we've got to be a little bit careful that Ball worked down this side. Camavinga up to Reyna. Oh, he's running. He's going. Oh, that would have been magical. It would have been magical. You want to see more from Ben Beachy there. I don't think Ben does well enough at all. Um, okay. All to work for. All to work for. Not happy. Not happy with your Ben. You need to get out there and do more. Benders, I'm not happy. Midfielders. And very happy with Mbappe. Let's try and give some some encouragement to Kylian Mbappe. Sometimes he doesn't play great. I've got to tell Declan Rice no second yellows. He knows by now. But yeah, start the second half. Defense is okay. Starkey got off to a good start and, and hasn't looked back, to be fair. The midfield is starting to step up and look okay. Mbappe took his goal really, really well. But Beachy not looking great. And Vito as yet untested. We are in control. I'm going to praise the boys and see how we get going here into the second half. But, um, yeah. Yeah, Rice is tired and Rice is booked. So we're going to keep an eye on that situation for sure. United definitely aren't done here. Go to meet Brandon Williams. He just goes past. And what a shot. What a goal. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Little bit of defensive uh, naivety there. Little bit of defensive naivety. Mitch joins. Goes to him. Expects him to come inside. It looks like perhaps. It doesn't do enough. It's a great goal from the fullback. Vito could have done better. And now we go from praising to berating, just like that. Joins to Rice. Mbappe gets it. Back out to the fullback. Chance to make up for an earlier mistake. And Giovanni Reina, he hangs on a leg and the toes just seem to make enough contact. But it just skews past the post. Declan Rice off. Juan Carlos Munoz on. Ben Bici off. James Matthews off. On the pitch. Faith boys. I have faith. Save the third sub until later. In control. But we've handed back this game. I'm going to go attacking. I'm going to try and fire up the boys. Try and get them in. I think Starkey is going to be the third sub here. I think Starkey's going to have to be the third sub. And it's going to be facey. It's going to be facey. Try and get ourselves ahead here. Put ball into box. Fine. I mean, we are wasting a lot of stupid chances. Erdegaard late on with a corner. Delict to Reina. To James Matthews. 23 and a half million for the Irishman. Players at the far post. He's going to take on his man and lose out. He had players in support. He decided not to use them. And it comes back then. 
in their favor and oh no it's a mix up at the back Cosme's clearance gets off Kamavinga falls to yeah falls to them there I think that might be slightly offside my heart stops for a moment but Cosme I think kicks it against Kamavinga it, ref it falls back down then oh it falls back down to Anthony Martial Van der Beek and just offside. Gotta say, I think this pressing is killing us. I think this line is killing us. I think. 100%. Need to start playing better. But it looks like we're going to go to extra time unless the boys want to end on a high note. We're going to go to extra time. Okay, so that will give us a chance to replace one more player. Um, I'm probably going to go with Mitch Joins here. I'm probably going to go with Mitch Joins. Simply because he's so tired and I'd rather be fresh at the back than in midfield. Just not happy. Just not happy, and I think joins for Ferry is just the way. That's just the way to go. Where is Ferry? Tell the boys they're not good enough. Tell them they've been unlucky in places. Start extra time. I knew this would be a close game. I didn't want it to be this close. A man more. Let's go. We're in attack mode. Drop back down to positive. Odegaard. Up on Meccano. It's simple, but it's not defended well. Victor can't quite get a hand to it. He's not been at his best today. Two balls right next to him and he couldn't get them done. Going to move three up front. Going to move the fullbacks up a touch. Just going to go for United and, and see if we can't try and get something back in this um because right now we lose our unbeaten streak we lose our invincibility we lose the competition it's not really something i want to do matthews here on the left ball across kamavinga against the post and mbappe taps in from cross range and just like that we are back in it but um yeah, instead of being a winner, this is an equalizing goal. This is so tense. Right now, I can't... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that, that Mbappe was there. But we've hit the post twice. We've had some bad luck in front of goal. We've really not been good enough in defense. And it looks like we might be... heading towards penalties. Okay. Um, we practice them. Fine. Individuals. Hey. Have faith. Have faith in you. Have faith in you. Anthony Martial steps up. Alice Vito. Guess is the right way, doesn't dive well enough. Kylian Mbappe, first man up for us. He'll face it off, of course, against David De Gea. Sends him the wrong way, and it is one all from the spot here. Paul Pogba. What can he do? Oh, he puts it wide. There's a big miss from Paul Pogba. And Reyna wasn't looking very confident until we had a word with him. Giovanni Reyna slots it right down the middle. De Gea dies up the way. Advantage 
Swansea at the early stages of this shootout. Mason Greenwood. Carlos Vitor with a big save. Unbelievable scenes. Two in a row miss for United. Pressures off Munoz now. And he does put it right down the middle. De Gea will not be fooled this time. Martin Odegaard to get United back on track here. Vitor guess is right, but he can't get to the ball. Well taken into the bottom corner. James Matthews now to step up. Sends De Gea the wrong way. Now the pressure is on United. The final penalty of their five. It is going to be Van Der Beek. And he seems very slow to kind of get through his teammates and step up. Perhaps not looking forward to it the most. Vito's already saved one. And that's in off the woodwork. Very close to missing for Van Der Beek. But he does calmly stroke it home. And now De Gea with a chance to keep his team in the game. And for some reason the fifth penalty for Swansea is Cosme. The Brazilian slots home into the corner. The most tightest of wins. But you can hear the fans. You can hear what it means to them today. On penalties. But they do shut out United. Good save by Carlos Vito. Here we go with the trophy lift. A familiar sight for the boys in white. As Chris Army there. Front and centre. Enjoying his time. And the Swansea fans voices ring around Old Trafford. What a tough game. Goes to show that this team... It's far from perfect, but we get the job done somehow. We do get the job done somehow. Um, you know, even losing, even losing Camavinga late on there, we, we still kind of got through. Oh my God. But yeah, Pogba. Pogba with a bad penalty miss. Greenwood, I think that was a decent save by Carlos Vito. Munoz was a poor penalty. That was right down the middle. De Gea didn't have to work hard for that. Um, the other penalties were all pretty good. Reyna was down the middle. It was just kind of, you know, a nervous looking penalty, I think. Um, apart from that, and the beak did hit the post and almost like screwed that up. Would have been nice. Take the pressure off our final penalty taker. But Cosme comes up big and gets that final penalty. So. Really glad we got the job done. Hit the woodwork a couple of times. The hair was good. Their back line was decent. And we never look good. We never look good going forward. So um, we had to kind of stack up towards the end to get us back into it. Early goal to us. Brandon Williams, you know, getting them back early in the second. Then just before halftime in extra time, they get their goal. And Bappe just, you know, keeps us alive. And then that penalty shootout, Carlos Vito, the hero with his save. Not the way you'd want to win these, but um, yeah, <laughs> any wins a win. Any wins a win. Enjoy your success, boys. That was good. That was good to win that, and you know, final game of the season in what will be the penultimate game. Ah, uh, sorry, penultimate. Video in our series. Yeah. We win. It's tight. It's deserved. It's a sex topple. The only man who comes out of the game with real credit there is Mbappe. Um. Hammerfinger, I guess, before getting taken off as well, was pretty good. I'm going to praise Conduct, can't praise anything else there. But yeah, I mean, Ben Beachy didn't play well, and then off the bench, the subs didn't do 
a ton. Matthews looked okay up front. Definitely looked better than Ben Beachy. Um, but yeah, like it looks like we're in control of the game. We looked like the better team. Unfortunate to take it to extra time and penalties, but came through. If you just look at the stats, you look at the ratings, you think, yeah, this is well deserved by us. I think. I think that the result is pretty much fair that we had to go all the way to penalties to get there. I think Vito didn't do well enough during the game for the two goals, but he did well enough in the shootout, of course. And yeah, backline looked okay, but never comfortable. Midfield looked good, but never in control. And those strikers and Bappe, like one moment of magic, one two yard tap in <laughs> but they both count the same and i'm i'm really glad he was there for the second but yeah ben beachy taking the night off not loving that um yeah we did hit the post like twice i believe as well at the least maybe three times we hit the bar as well maybe i can't remember and we had a couple of good shots that just fizzed high and wide so Good opportunities we didn't take. On the balance, I think we shaded it, but yeah. Paper thin difference, which you won't see. Yeah. But if you saw the game, of course, as we all did, you will see what I'm talking about. So we just by the barest, thinnest margin defend a Champions League trophy. Hamavinga, I guess, is not going to the World Cup and will not be playing in the Club World Championship either. He is done. That is a shame. Uh, Ryan Hughes and Alan Ramsden don't play any games in the Champions League, but they do get medals. They were told Chris Meffham don't start any, but get medals. And it's 13 games. Unlucky for some, but the Ligt, Mbappe, Cosme, and Vitor play every single game. Uh, 13 and 13 from Mbappe with six assists. Fair play to him. Uh, 11 and 12 from Ben Bici. And 6 and 5 and 12 for Reina. Very impressive too. James Matthews, six goals in seven games. Only one of which is a start. Absolutely crazy there. Um, yeah, absolutely crazy, but kudos to him as well. Lowest rated player was Levi, 6'8", off the bench, 6'9", 4", 6'9", 5", 6'9", Then we're up into the sevens. Good ratings here. Matthew, 6'6", six, six, uh, sorry, Stem, 6'5". Bappe, 7'84". Gio Reyna, 7'95". Unbelievable. Unbelievable, boys. Let me know what you think about that match. Uh, if you see that the same way I did. Because. Yeah. I mean that just cost us a ton of money. It did cost us a ton of money. So. 17.36. So. 28.97. Uh, 28.97. 29.05. Twenty nine, fifteen, thirty nine, forty 49.5 million is basically what we got and we give out 50 million to the players and so yeah and it's exactly the same with the Premier League I think we won I can't remember exactly how much we won but I think we lost like 10 million in the league and we lose 5 million and change possibly for the Champions League um, <laughs> you know, winning's supposed to make money. It doesn't. It really, really doesn't. Um, I'm not going to talk to the press about that. We're going to go to the end of season rest here at the end of May, go into June. Um, I do want to just take a quick look. And we, we finally come up with the achievement for Invincible on Steam. So happy with that. End of season review 2025 season. We have got the cups to prove it. Super Cup, 
Community Shield. We got the League Cup, the FA Cup, the Champions League, the Premier League, the Club World Championship from last year. It's all good. It's going to take some time to get through because there's so many signings and sales. Probably going to take a moment or two there. Yeah, but that you can see who the the big signings were. So Giovanni Reina, the star man, A minus. We didn't pay him enough wages, apparently. Phenomenal season, a C plus from Bappe, and that's mainly because we paid 170 million for him. Um, okay, I think that'll be the downside, not the positive, but okay. C plus for Camavinga. And a C for Matis de Ligt. Okay. I'm not sure I fully agree with the ratings here. I think, like, Reina's an A+. Mbappe's an A+. Taking the money to account, maybe you downgrade it slightly. A solid B+, plus for Camavinga, and a solid B, B- minus for de Ligt. At worst. Maybe at worst. Tammy Carpenter. We paid too much for okay. Ezekiel, we paid nothing. Okay, yeah, it's just basically the money situation. If we're paying the right price and if we're paying the right wage, the board are happy. Transfers out. Um, I don't think anyone was super crazy here against this to me they can understand brooks they understand tonali they understand Ramon. yeah and loans the best loans brian deal who did a good job at millwalls we saw hansel hernandez good goals for telford darren evans a solid at the back at chester Kingdom, as we saw with Salzburg, played Champions League minutes, did well for them. And Aziz at Bromley and uh, Bradley Rahman as well at Wade. Decent, okay, season results. Board expected us to win the league. We won the league. 96% home attendance. 30 goals for Mbappe and a B-plus season, they say. 36 wins, 2 draws, 90 goals, 15 against... 110 points with a 75 goal difference. Only dropping those points, as we said earlier. Home to Brighton, away to Liverpool. The only games we did not win this season. I guess maybe you can put the Champions League final in that. It's a draw, but we did win on penalties. So it is that. They wanted us to win it. We did. 13 goals from Mbappe. B minus performance there. Um... Not important in the Super Cup, but we did okay. Mbappe did score one of our two goals, and that match joins the other C+. They don't really care about it, but it's nice to win it. Community Shield, the same as well. Beating United 2-1. Again, it's Mbappe scoring Sant in there, but another C+, solid little one there. The League Cup. First time we don't see Mbappe's name on the top scorer. Ben Beachy with 10 a good run against some tough teams. Uh, and we got the job done. So I'm very, very happy. C plus as well. They didn't care. And the FA Cup, they wanted us to win. We had a, a decently easy run through that. Goal conceded against Chesterfield. Then perfect the rest of the way. 2-0, 2-0, 2-0. 1-0 and 1-0. So very happy. And Munoz with the top goal scorer award there with three just a little C plus there as well, so very tough to uh, very tough to impress this board. <laughs> very tough. The referee game eight nil over Charlton was the biggest win. The the game to remember they've got that right as well six nil over PSG. Mbappe hitting four past his old club. Goal of the season. Um, hey, Mbappe just showing what we paid the money for what we paid the money for down a couple of million of broadcast revenue and the sponsorship money is through the roof we are a worldwide club we are probably the best club in the world right now which is crazy no new sponsorships at all 
Oprah and hospitality went up to get, you know, make up for the broadcast, I guess. We, we gained like 60 million sponsorship. We gained another 20 in prize money. And we gained another half a million here. Which, not too bad, I guess. 53 million merchandise sales. 30 of which come from abroad. Nearly 900,000 uh, shirts sold. Mbappe, Reina, Camavinga in there. No delete, but Brian Facey, bit of a legend, as is Ben Beachy. We lined up. Um, pretty much with this team, yeah. Pretty much with this team. Declan Rice instead of Munoz would be my choice. Um, but everything else is exactly right. Exactly right. I think next season we're going to have Rice and Munoz instead of Cook and Rice. Having Munoz there is correct, but having him taken away from the wrong English centre midfielder, I think. But um, yeah, no, great. Great team. Worked really well. September, November, December, January, March, April. We won the manager of the month in the Premier League. I think that's fair. Six of the awards, very decent. And then the manager of the year. Uh, player of the season from the fans is Gio Reyna. Young player Gio Reyna. Signing of the season, Gio Reyna. Goal of the season, Mbappe. Top goal scorer, Mbappe. Assist, Gio Reyna. Man of the match awards, Mbappe. Average rating is Reyna. And the best passer was Munoz. Mbappe. Most overall goals in the season, that's a new record of 57. Most clean sheets, 38 in the season for Carlos Vito. 14 player of the match awards for Mbappe. And the biggest ever transfer fee received was that 187 for King Yannick Helsten. Uh, defender of the season in the Champions League was Brian Facey. The golden shoe was Ben Bici. FIFA's under 21's player was Ben Beachy, the European Golden Boy, Ben Beachy, the Golden Glove, Carlos Vito, the CONCACAF Player of the Year and Midfielder of the Season in the Champions League was Gio Reyna, the World Cup Golden Ball, the, uh, the best French player, the Champions League Forward of the Year all go to Mbappe, and Michael Sant, the PFA Young Player of the Year award, so... Champions League, only the goalie wasn't in our favour. We had Facey, we had Reina, we had Mbappe. And there we go, hard work and effort paid off in the pitch. Such a feat didn't go unrewarded at the end of season award ceremony. Only one quote, this is blank, which I've never seen, that's interesting. Premier League, Champions League, FA Cup, League Cup, Super Cup, Community Shield. Club World Cup as well before pre-season. And one to end this season, hopefully, to round things off. It's a superb season for Swansea as they claimed their third successive title to back up their preseason credentials. Lee Burgess, Football 365. Thank you very much, Lee. Unbeaten season, 36 of 38. We are invincible. We are invincible. Magic. Absolutely magic. There's a review we just saw at the side of 2020 when we first took over. Vasily this Morgan Gibbs White. Connor Roberts ruining. Uh, Wilshire. Fletcher Ryan Manning. Sanabria. Alicia. I forgot about him. George Byers. Mike Grimes. Collinger. And Danda Campana. Okay. Ivan, Bidwell and Bennett, yeah. Oh, it takes me back, boys. It takes me back. Okay, club culture. Play possession, play entertaining, play attacking, play high tempo pressing. That is the Swansea way. Sign high repetition players. That is not the Swansea way. Work within a wage budget. We've always been good. Four-year deals for first-team players. Yes, please. Best youth in the country. Best youth in the world. Players for profit, most reputable team, biggest team in the world. Build a new stadium within five years. Okay. Okay. Oh. 
I love this. I love this. This is just gone. This is gone really. Congratulations. We're going to go win the league. Um, there's some names missing from you. Half of them have already gone, I guess. So, exactly what we were looking for. Okay, I thought that was like the highest we could be because it was on that side, but. Okay, we'll discuss promises next time. That was kind of weird. Okay, that was kind of weird. I expected it just to be like the best, sort of most ambitious sayings on the left, and it didn't turn out that way. Um, well in control of that. We're well in control of that. We just uh, didn't do enough. Rory Cornwell. Kudos to him. And Gamba. Looking okay. Did well for Newport. Rory. One of our feeder club players does excellently well. Former player of ours. We sold to them recently. And uh, he's hit the ground running. Kudos to that. Golden Boot Award, Marcus Rashford, Mbappe, and Beachy just in behind. And in the dream team, okay, Rashford and Odegaard. And then it's Vito, Facey, Cosby, Delict joins Cook, Munoz, Beachy, and Mbappe. Um, I wonder if it's formation that mean that we couldn't get that. Because only the wingers were our players. And I think that's... Um, yeah... I think that's very interesting. That's very interesting. So, Carlos Vitor is the goalie of the season in the Champions League. Lovely to see that. The top three defenders are Brian Fersey, Cosme and De Ligt. Uh, the midfielders of the season, Reiner in first, Munoz in third. Of course, Bappi and Mbici. The top end of things. You've got to love that, boys. You've got to love that, right? It'd be really nice if, if somehow we could get third forward and if we'd have got that second midfielder as well. And just like, realistically, that's as close to sweeping as you could get. Because you can't get more than one goalie. Really. But, um, yeah. <laughs> that's fantastic. Fantastic. We can go through just into June and see when the Club World Championship is uh, going to be drawn see how that happens okay so we can't lose more than four and a half million but you know we made a profit of 1.74 billion 1.51 billion in the premier league 15 million we could have lost and 111 million in taxes happy to pay it happy to pay it 10k from the fans that never changes four new deals four new deals worth 157 million per year. So those four new deals are more than we, we got the entirety of last season. <laughs> okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Wow. Right. And Camavinga does slide into the top top shirts. I thought he didn't, but I guess it was just a leak. Um yeah, my yeah, my brain is okay. That's why they wanted a new stadium within five years. Suitable sites and possible investors. We shouldn't need investors. We shouldn't need investors. Okay, so not judging it. I guess it's not been built yet. Nine hundred twenty-three million in the bank. Like, hope we don't need investors. Hope we don't need investors. But, but the director, Robert Guillo, wants to take the club to the next level. New stadium, big step in that direction. I, I mean, I don't even need to talk to this board. They just go do what I want them to do, you know? Just go do what I want them to do. Um, players back off loan. That's all fine. I wonder... How big we're going to be. We're 45,000 at the Liberty. New stadium in place. A really good team. Some work needs to be done. A couple of replacements. But. We are dominant. We are absolutely dominant. And we have gained. 
We have gained Man United as a competitive rival. <laughs> Favourite personnel, Demir Halstead, Facey Brewster and Bappe. I think all of those are fair. Though all of those are more than fair. Icons, Britain, Allchurch, Trundle, Michu and Thomas were already here. Ben Beachy as an icon, 100% deserved. I'm here for it. Um, Giovanni Reina. I'm not, I'm not as sure on that one. I get it, but I think if we swap Reina for Facey, I think Facey deserves to be. Mind you, so does Alan Tate, and Tatey doesn't show up in that at all. And the club legends, Mr. Swansea himself, Alan Curtis, and... Yeah. I guess. I guess I'll take it. We've won far too much me not. But Curtis is the real legend. State the art, state the art, exceptional, exceptional. Okay, so uh, 599.69, very nice. Very nice. We're searching for a site. We're planning at a 60,000 capacity stadium, which is another big jump up from where we were. We started about 21,000. In five years, six years in game, we move up to 45, and then we're big enough to look for a 60,000 seat stadium. That'll put us up with most teams in the Premier League. It's only going to be like two or three bigger, right? Yeah. Yeah. United are 75 almost. Tottenham a little over 62. And Arsenal the only other team over 60. That would put us right up in the mix with the big boys. And we could probably expand. We could probably expand that to 80 or 100,000. Which would put us up to somewhere perhaps being the best in the world uh i don't know that's very interesting though that is very interesting we're not far behind anyone anyway to be fair we're we're pretty good where we are but i didn't expect that didn't expect that okay let's go and have a quick look at the um Huh. Okay, so 2020, 2022, 2025, no 2029. So we're not going to be playing in the FIFA World Cup. Like, that's interesting because. Okay. Um. Yeah, okay. Huh. 2000 was their initial one. And 2005, all the way through to 2020, is every year. And then I guess 2021 is off because of coronavirus or whatever. And then 2022, it's back on. And then there wasn't one in 23 or 24. We win in 25. And it looks like we've got to wait to defend that for 2029. So I guess we're not going to be doing that. Which makes this not the penultimate. But the final game of the season. And the final video of the season. It's technically our third draw I guess. But um, it ends up on the win column. It did take extra time to beat Lyon there as well but across the board an unbelievable unbelievable season and you saw our weaknesses you saw how poor we were in places and how easily united undone us but we still won all four games against them this season we still drew two and won an absolute boatload of games we were invincible we weren't quite perfect brighton liverpool had something to say about that the current team looks good. The future doesn't look too bad. Um, in the first team squad, there are definitely, definitely some work to be done. Hey, Gerbers and Blackburn are the only three star players in the youth, I guess. 
Uh, Darren Evans and Anthony DeVolt. Okay, so three centre backs, a midfielder, and an attacking midfielder. Then another centre back. We're, we're good on centre backs, it seems. Dumphy, the Cardiff boy that we signed, and Shane Not. I like Shane Not. Four and a half. We look, we look pretty good. Okay, if this is going to be the final video in this series, I guess there's two things I want to do. I'm going to look at the team and um, set things up in this way so you can see a little bit more about them. So Carlos Vito is our starter. McLean long-term backup, perhaps Ramsden's backup for now. We've got some good other options. Doesn't look that we've got a top, top goalie coming in behind Vito, but he's only 19, so we don't need one. So that's okay. If we look at the left-back positions as well, we need to do that. I think this sets up. About as good as we can. Uh, Facey, great. Starkey could be good for the future. I guess Facey's fallen down to four and a half star. I didn't notice that before. Yeah, Starkey could overtake him. Robinson, Abdus Alam, Spence look good. Bunch of other options for possible backups. Right backs. Reed and Carpenter down here are backups. Gibbons are backup. Blackmore. Novel Williams. Graham. I mean, most of these are actually right backs anyway, if they can play uh, at centre back. Then I think I might keep them sent back. We got enough. We got enough full backs. Uh, so Liam Mullen, not great. Ferry's current backup. You can see how precarious that position is, though. Young Tom Jacker, Aaron Joseph, Mitch joins the starter. Looks like Jim Young, National, uh, sorry, Northern Irish uh, Youth International. Pay 3.2k. And if he ends up being a starter, that would be mental because we would have paid like three grand for him and nine grand for, for Facey. Starting fullbacks at the biggest club in the world. And we paid less than 14 million. Uh, 14 million. We did pay less than 40 million. 14,000 pounds for the pair. I mean, that is crazy. It is the weakest part of our squad, for sure. Which is kind of where it does show up, sadly. Okay, that doesn't seem... I just want the centre-backs, but that's not going to be the case, so... Uh, Cosme and Delict right now, Mefum, decent backup, but probably can get rid of him, run with Gerbers, there's Milosevsky and Nick Cooper as well, Joe Richmond's kind of in the team right now and he's on the same level as those boys, so we could definitely do that, longer term, DeVolt and Evans, Hartson, we see all those boys, bunch of others, a bunch of others there. As uh, a big storm is actually happening in Texas over me. Oh boy. Had enough of big storms and tornado warning. Had enough of those lately. Please, no more. Um, Some solid options here as well. In midfield, Christian Dolo falls down. Dimitro falls down a bit. Aziz falls down. George Hood. Only a four star. I think he was higher before. Uh, Raman holds his, I think. It's not bad, though. The, you know, the levels are pretty good. And, of course, Glenn Blackburn is, uh, is looking like the real deal there. Maybe some game time for him. Robert Bevan has fallen off, boys. Oh. Yeah, he was one that came through our youth academy that I really, really wanted to do well. And he's a good player. He's worth 61 million. But he just looks like he's perennial backup. Levi Towers doesn't look amazing. Sant is holding himself up very well in high company. So I like that. But he's more of an attacking midfielder. Talking of which. 
It's him and Geo Reyna up the top where they'll probably stay. Then some okay options. But yeah, it's Aaron Hay and Shane not long term up there. Andy Monroe, maybe. Uh, Demarco Rodriguez could be a backup. Up front. Mbappe, Beachy, James Matthews. I think, yeah. Ben Beaches isn't five star either, so James Matthews could be better. Dumphy could be as good, which I will take. Ryan Hughes, who also came through the Youth Academy. It's him and it's Bevan. Uh, looks like Hughes might end up being slightly better. You got Naismith as well. Yeah, we're definitely seeing some of these youngsters fall off a tiny bit. Oh, Bevan. My great hope that never quite panned out, boys. Never quite panned out. Sent him on loan National League, got game time. League One got game time. Probably should have loaned him out here as well. And then back up rotation and first team next season. Didn't work out that way. Didn't work out that way. We had such big hopes for him. That's a disappointment. But at least we got Ryan Hughes through into the first team squad and looking really good. Um, despite the fact he's only ever played 12 Premier League games for us. Um, his, his development certainly wasn't hurt being at the club. Um, yeah. That's about it. That's about it. The matches start 11th of June. And looks like we go towards July for the final. So I'm going to pause the recording here. I know this is a bit of a, a long episode, just over an hour as we speak. I'm going to pause. We're going to come back at the end of that and um, just have a little roundup of the, the World Cup as a way to finish. But yeah, smash that like button, hit that subscribe. You know the deal. We're going to come back in a moment. No time pass for you, but time skip for me. Okay, we are here at the, uh, at the World Cup. The World Cup 2026. Got those World Cup year. Not a Euro year as I was for some reason thinking about. Uh, so yeah, we've got this um, tournament to kind of go through. And it's kind of been interesting. Um, so far, some interesting results, but I'm going to run you through all the groups and all the knockouts until we get all the way to the final itself, which we're going to watch live because some of my players are involved. So, uh, you can have a think about that really as we go, but Argentina beat England in the last one. Okay. In group A. United States topped the group from Croatia and the Central African Republic. A big 6-0 win for America. Croatia, a good away win. And then in the, uh, the final game, a solid win for America there too. So, a good group. Very good group. Teams you expect to go through, went through. Uh, Serbia won all. Late, late equaliser was Senegal. Senegal narrowly losing to Paraguay and Serbia beating Paraguay takes them top of the group. Senegal out. A little surprised. I thought Paraguay would probably be the, the one getting knocked out there, but interesting. Um, Ghana, big win over Honduras. Then Jaden Sancho's a hat-trick against them. Just sort of decides the group really because a big win for England over Honduras. Mexico topped the group with a win over Greece and a win over Venezuela and a draw between the other two. It was very, very tight, but yeah, goal scored, goal difference, everything in Greece's favor. So they just about managed to squeak through that one. Uh, Algeria beating Saudi Arabia, then drawing with Germany. Very good to the start of the tournament that guaranteed their progress and Germany went top of the group with a big win over Saudi Arabia but 
Good credible draw there with uh, Germany for Algeria. Uh, Alexander Isaac with a hat trick over China. Then China managed to get a draw against Colombia. And Colombia then went and beat Sweden. Very weird group in a lot of ways, but yeah. You the teams you expect to go through went through, but Sweden did not top it as expected. Good win for the Czech Republic over Jamaica, who then got a draw against Argentina before Argentina beat Czech Republic. More of the same kind of sharing results almost, but the teams you expect to go through went through. Austria open up with a big win over Guinea-Bissau. You've got Uruguay also there with a good win. Both of them three. So it came down to the final group game. And Palestri go 33 minutes in decides the group there. Uh, group I, Japan, big winners over Cape Verde. Then France, decent win there. Couple of goals from Pape. Couple more in the win over Japan. To settle that group, J. Cameroon, Costa Rica, big win for Cameroon. Then a loss by the same margin to Portugal, and we retain the three nothings with a win for Portugal. So, not too bad. And Turkey, huge win. Ali Akman with a hat trick over Korea. Brazil with a Rodrigo hat trick over South Korea. They got absolutely battered. And then somehow, two early goals get pegged back to 2 1. Go down to 10 men and yet still hold off Brazil. So, that's Group K. Uh, Morocco beating Belgium by going down to 10 men late on. Morocco overcoming Chile, who went down to 10 men really early. And Belgium with a couple of late goals to solidify the win. 3 0 up, get a man sent off, back to 3 all, two late goals, Belgium. Just about pushed Chile out of this, but Morocco take top spot. Italy, a late bad stony penalty, put some past Angola. Australia get a good win, and then Italy overcome Australia. Ivory Coast, big win over it. Two sending off Syria. Uh, Spain get their win, and then somehow Syria beat Spain. But it's not enough to, uh, to knock them out of the tournament. Netherlands 4-0 Iran. New Zealand get a good win, then New Zealand get done by Netherlands. Nope. And then the final group, Canada, 2-1 win over Uzbekistan. A big win for Denmark over that same team. And then a pair of penalties. It's Jonathan David and it's Skov. 23 and 30 minutes, early penalties, but it's one all there. And they go through. So, that's the groups. Pretty, uh interesting lots of games in the second round usa 4-1 over paraguay serbia 1-0 over croatia england with a good 3-0 victory over greece ghana over mexico 3-2 sweden 4-2 over germany germans are out early the big shock uh, for me early on one of them anyway algeria beating colombia continuing their good form austria put out argentina which is our second big shock. Uh, Uruguay out to the Czech Republic 1-0. France 4-0 over Cameroon. Japan put out Portugal 1-0. Absolutely amazing. Belgium out 1-0 by Turkey. Brazil overcome Morocco 3-1. Italy need extra time, but they put out Spain 2-1 in one of the clashes of this first knockout round. And uh, the second round, as it were. Ivory Coast put out Australia. Netherlands 4-0 over Canada. And Denmark 5-0 over New Zealand. Into the third round. Ghana. Knocked out by the United States in extra time. England take care of Serbia 3-0. Sweden, Czech Republic. 3 all goes to penalties. The Czech Republic come through. Austria continue their good form. Outsting the uh, Algerians. Which is a very, very good uh, performance by Algeria. But they become... The latest victim of a rampant Austrian team there. France knocked out by Brazil. Turkey overcome Japan. Uh, Italy over Denmark. And the Netherlands over the Ivory Coast. No real surprises here, I'd say. Pretty much as expected. 
And then into the quarterfinals. Austria continue their form. They beat the United States on penalties. Uh, England, big 8-0 win over the Czech Republic. Uh, Netherlands, 2-0 over Brazil. And Italy out 2-1 extra time. Turkey. Absolutely crazy. And into the semis. Turkey, 3-2 over Austria. Finally, finally getting them, um, getting them out. Yusuf Demir, of course, playing for Austria against Turkey. And, um, yeah, the Shaggy, he's got a hat-trick, late goal from Schlager. Not really, uh, not really good enough from Austria in places, but a very good tournament for them. They get all the way to the World Cup semi-finals. Netherlands go down 2-0 to a Mason Greenwood goal at the end of the first half and a Mason Mount goal at the end of the second half. Harry Kane missed the penalty. Mason Kane would have scored it, of course. Uh, but a controlling win there as well. And that does set up the final today. After Netherlands beat Austria for third place, get England versus Turkey. And that will be the game we're attending. Turkey with a very decent squad. Good team. Um, you've got to back England for this, surely. We're playing in England. That sort of usually helps them out. Looks like Brian Fierce and Lewis Cook are starters. Declan Rice and Ben Beachy on the bench. Um, but of course, pulling for England because of that. We, we've got four players that can win a World Cup versus zero. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see how that works out for us. See how that works out for us. I want to talk about anything with the press right now. We're only here to see the World Cup. Come on, game. Let's go. I don't know why it's taken so long because it was right on the day and I checked the time we were right before it so there's quite a lot of quite a lot of things happening in the background I guess that even when you go forward like an hour or two the game is processing so much but we are into the final then World Cup 2026 Looking at Turkey warming up there. England on the other side. The big game. The final. As they line up. England, I guess, are in blue. And Turkey are in white. Did not expect that. Um, before anything really happens. Let's get the formation. That's well, we've got match stats up there. This is a bit more of a match stats. Um, go oh. oh, that way around and go. There we go. Let's see how this goes then. Uh, England beat them finalists by Argentina in the last World Cup. Got to be favourites. Again, looks like uh, we do have Ben Beachy starting up front with Declan Rice. But the other two are not in the lineup right now, which is kind of a shame. They are on the bench though. Lewis Cook there. Brian Facey. They're going with Lamptey. You know, I can complain about that one, I guess. Um, doesn't look like much happening at all, though, before halftime. England all over Turkey, but... Really, there's there's just... Nothing's happened there, right? Yeah, well, we're watching key highlights. We're watching key highlights. We go through the entire first half without a highlight. Um, Turkey coming back into it this half. Rashford... 
seems to be uh, getting booking. So, first highlight is a Gomez throwing to Foden. Back to him, back to Foden. Saka, Foden, Rashford, Kane, cleared. So, yeah, they took Ben Beachy off. Saka to Lamptey. Back to Saka. Eric Dyer to Rashford now on the right flank. Bill Foden gets tackled. And it's a through ball for Fatih. Is this the goal? Oh, Alex Stone with a big save. And a quick play out as well. Good save from Alex Stone. Henderson looks a little tired. Are uh, we going to see another change? So Cook came on for Rice. Kane came on for Ben Beachy. It's only really Brian Facey that didn't get involved in this. Late on though, as we cross the 90 minute marker, a throw in by England is headed clear. Jordan Henderson picks up. It's Gomez here now. Cook, to Gomez, to Kane, Bill Foden. Oh, Rashford, Lamptey, it hits a defender, moves out. Henderson back to Cook. Lamptey, Henderson, Cook. Playing the ball around you in midfield, not really going in. It's back to Eric Dyer. Marcus Rashford comes showing for it. Cook, what a ball! Lewis Cook to Phil Foden. The Swansea boy gets that pass through. What a beautiful through ball. And the man we targeted for so long and couldn't get into the club. Gets England what could be a 91st minute World Cup final winning goal. Just inside the post. Beautiful ball by Lewis Cook. Bill Ford in there. Lovely little finish. And there it is. 2026. 20, in the land of the Americas. In the United States. England. Will be your 2026 World Cup champions. In this save. Four World Cup winners, three appeared in the final, and one of them, Lewis Cook, got the assist for the winning goal. I'm glad Phil Foden is the hero of the hour. Big fan of his. So there it is. That will uh, wrap things up. Not the, not the best game in the world. <laughs> Not the best game in the world, but at least it didn't go to extra time and, and kind of, yeah. Uh, I'm a bit upset that they went with Lamptey, to be fair. They kind of shared time out, but... Like, Facey played most of the games, I think looks a better player. I'm not sure why they went Lamptey for the final. We started with Rice and Beachy. They got taken off for Cook and Saka and uh, Kane. Well, for Sancho. It's decent, you know. It's We got players involved. We get some World Cup winners. Alex Stone on a, a breakaway. Absolutely phenomenal. England's number one. Ten caps and seven of those are at the World Cup. And he kept seven clean sheets. So, uh, player of the tournament for me, Alex Stone. Absolutely unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. I... I don't... I don't know. They went with from Aaron Ramsdale. It was under a bid at the moment. Wow. Free transfer to Brighton. 2.9 to Villa or 15 West Ham. I mean... That's weird. But yeah, he was in charge for a long, long period. But Alex Stone comes in, keeps seven clean sheets, and suddenly England are world champions. You cannot fault it. 3 0 over Ghana, then. Jaden Sancho opening up with a hat trick. A big win against Honduras. Easy group, but gets people in. Then in the second round, it's a good win over Greece. 3 0. The Mason Greenwood hat trick against Serbia. A big 8-0 against 10 men, uh, Czech Republic. Solid win over the Netherlands. And then an injury time winner in the final against Turkey. Cook, Rice, Beachy, Brian Fasey. World 
purple champions. Unbelievable. Kudos to Alex Stone. Kudos to Alex Stone. Yeah, yeah, I was there to watch my players. I was. Um, I wasn't there for any other reason. But that's awesome. That's awesome. World Cup champions, boys. I think that will wrap up this save and this series. So, thank you very much for being a part of this journey. I hope you have enjoyed this little look into what made Swansea so special years ago. And our replication of that within FM21. The Swansea way works. It is a proven way to play. There are elements of money ball and other strategies within it. But basically, you buy young, you buy cheap, you buy players that others do not see the value in. But that you do. And you do not compete with teams above you. You literally... Back out of transfers if other teams that are bigger than you come in for them. You're not going to pay over the odds for a player. You're not going to gamble or risk on a young player. You're going to buy in bulk. You're going to buy cheap. You're going to sell at a big profit. And you're going to keep the team marching on. New stadium on the way. Great facilities. Number one club in the world. 2026. Absolutely fantastic. Enjoyed it, hope you did too, and I'll see you for the next series on FM21, plus more games, more content here on the channel very soon. Till then, take care, see you soon. Catch me over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash chrisormy, where we continue our journeyman save with OGC Nice, and overthrowing Paris Saint-Germain in France. And yeah, like the video, hit that subscribe Ring that notification bell. I will see you soon. Leave a comment what you thought of this series. I'll be seeing you soon, guys. Bye now.